another failure criterion, and this is one that's, uh, well, actually, let me go back. I, I want to make one point about the Tresca criterion, okay? So you, if you remember that we have some associated flow rule, or if we use an associated flow rule um, that says the plastic part of the strain is some, or strain rate, is some multiplier times uh, partial F, partial sigma IJ, and we show that that's equal to SIJ. And we also sh showed or talked about that that's the normal uh, to the yield surface, right? So, um, well, you can see that even though the stress states at a location, like, say, really close to this, this point here, uh, at a location really close to this point here, on either side there, the flow rule or the direction of the plastic strain rate can be quite different. So even though if I move along this direction, the normal with respect to J2 is defined in that direction or something close to it, whereas the normal with respect to, to um, the von Mises yield stress is in a different direction. Okay. And you can also see because of the sharp corners, at this point exactly, the, the normal is undefined. And so that can cause some issues when using the Tresca criterion. And sometimes uh, this is where non-associative flow rules come into play. So. There's another flow rule that's, so the, the, the Tresca criterion, because it lacks pressure dependence, is not typically, again, used for rocks. So let's talk about one that is. And so this guy is called the Drucker-Prager criterion. And what it is, it actually has a pressure dependence. So the yield surface is a function of the pressure and J2, okay? And so we have our standard kind of von Mises type square root of 3J2. And then we subtract off a, a scalar. Uh, this is a fitting coefficient times the pressure. So there's a linear dependence in pressure minus Y. And this equals to 0, OK? Where the pressure, as we've defined before, is 1 third sigma KK, OK? So you can see that if we use an associated flow rule with this guy, so again, we have, we're going to have some partial F, partial sigma IJ. Well, we'll obviously have, uh, due to this term here, a pressure dependence, right? So if we actually just, um, you know, due to the, well, if we just compute this guy, right, it'll be beta because it's a constant uh, partial P, partial sigma IJ, right? And so that's partial, partial sigma ij minus one third sigma kk. And that's minus one third sigma ik. I'm sorry, delta, delta ik, delta jk. So that's one third ij. And so this term that would show up in the flow rule indicates a pressure dependence. in the plastic flow. Okay. And so then a picture of what uh, this guy looks like is some. Okay, I took this picture from Wikipedia. So the, uh, you can see the, the kind of zero axis is somewhere up here, okay? So basically, this, this says that in tension, the yield surface uh, gets smaller such that anywhere out here in this region, you'd have sort of an instantaneous failure of the material. Uh, but then in pressure, uh, with the pressure dependence, so in compression, uh, the yield surface actually grows in, in diameter to, to some size. So, um, so this is a, any, any cross section through this is still a circle, though. It's just this line, um, uh, 
the, this angle uh, changes as a function of pressure. Okay, so that's sort of where that coefficient beta comes from, or plays the role of how sharply the pressure, you know, how much the pressure dependence is. Okay.